a temple dedicated to all the gods built in 25 BC with the largest unreinforced dome in the world till date and an oculus of 30 feet in diameter on the top of the dome allowing rainwater to pass through this is pantheon the only monument built by the romans which is continuously in use since its build pantheon means all gods the romans were allowed to worship foreign gods inside the pantheon as long as they paid their taxes and pledged loyalty to the emperor this was a temple dedicated to all gods built by marcus agrippa in 25 bc the inscription below the triangular pediment proclaims in latin marcus agrippa son of lucius three times consul built this The Pantheon has a distinct look of a Greek temple with the columns made of blocks, cross beams, porticos and pediments at the front. But the temple is a circular building made of thousands and thousands of bricks in typical Roman style. The walls made of concrete and faced with bricks. Above the walls stands the world's largest unsupported dome measuring 43 meters in diameter. To support the weight of the dome They made arches embedded in the walls which the architects call blind arches. They distribute the load around instead of concentrating on one point. Due to fire in 80 and 110 AD, the entrance got damaged and Emperor Hadrian reconstructed it. in 120 AD by extending the portico supported by 16 columns unlike many ancient columns that are made from a series of cylindrical drums stacked up these columns are a single piece granite carried all the way from egypt In 1625 two bell towers were built on the sides of the front which the Romans called scornfully donkey ears and were removed after the unification of Italy The ceiling of the portico was covered with shiny bronze plating which was replaced with the wooden beams in early 17th century Some say even the door is original others say it's been continuously renovated and very little of the original remains On entering inside, our first sight goes to the giant dome. What is most surprising about the architecture of the Pantheon is its mathematical perfection. The height from the floor to the rooftop is same as the diameter of the dome, which is 43.4 meters. Imagine placing a big spear inside. It just fits in by touching the ground. The dome features copper panels in five rings of 28. The wall at the base of the dome are 20 feet thick, made from heavy concrete mixed with travertine stone. As it goes to the top, the weight and thickness is reduced to less than 5 feet by using lighter volcanic stone, pumice. The oculus, which is called the eye of the Pantheon, is about 9 meter in diameter. which is the only natural source of light in the interior rain coming through the oculus is drained through 22 holes located in the middle of the floor and connected to the underground sewage system the floor is also 1800 years old but much of the marble has been replaced over the years without changing the design of altering circles and squares
After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Pantheon fell into a state of neglect and later sacked by the barbarians. In 609 AD, it was donated by the Byzantine Emperor Phocas to Pope Boniface IV, who consecrated it to Saint Mary and the Martyrs. The main altar, which is straight ahead directly opposite to the entrance, once stood the statue of Jupiter. In 609 AD, it has been replaced with a wooden icon in a frame showing Mary holding baby Jesus. The other niches, which today hold Christian images, may have held statues of heavenly gods worshipped by the Romans. Face the altar and turn to your right. You will see the tomb of Victorio Emanuele II with the inscription which means the father of his nation. Until mid-1800s, Italy was divided into a number of separate states ruled by foreign powers. Victorio Emanuele II united all of the Italy into a country by 1870. If you visit Piazza Venezia, the huge white monument is dedicated to him by his son and successor, Umberto. On the opposite side of Victorio Emanuele's tomb is the tomb of Umberto. He was the first king of United Italy. The monument is topped with a ceremonial crown sitting on top of a purple base, which is symbolized for royalty. On the right side of the tomb of Umberto lies his queen Margarita. She is best known as the person for whom the classic Margarita Pisa was named in 1889. With green basils, white mozzarella and red tomato sauce, it's the color of Italian flag. On the left side of the tomb of Umberto is the statue of Madonna and Child. Beneath the statue is a glass niche with a coffin inside. This is the tomb of artist Raphael. He is best known for his painting and frescoes. He was also an architect and archaeologist. He was one of the Jains of the Italian Renaissance. Pantheon looks very much like it did back then despite several renovations over the millennium. All the statues in the ditches are different, but we stand beneath the same dome and experience the same wonders as the ancient Romans. The Pantheon is the only ancient building in Rome continuously used since its construction. It's still a place where young couple get married and where Romans attend mass to gaze up into the dome. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to find my next video.